and welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben. Once somewhere out there in the void, while those in terrestrial embrace fell without bother into nightly song, an old rock hopper met his eyes upon a more eternal dance. Aye, when the soft hearted rest their voice, the sinner is left to chant in darkness that unto requiem no wicked melody finds a chorus among angels. When the nocturne calls, the ghost knife of Callisto, maestro of the stars, pirouettes to the music and answers with a valiant coda. Good night to this trusty ship. Good night to my bag of tricks. Good night, you missed, you little bitch. Good night, life, and let all Baratna live filthy rich. Who is Clyce Ashford? Me, Baratna. The best damn pirate the soul system has ever seen. Hell of a pirate. Hell of a commander. No, they don't make him like Ashford anymore, and I suppose that's for the best. The world looks to move on from men like that, but it's Ashford himself who helped the world move on from him. For the good of the belt. For the good of peace. Today we tell the story of Clice Ashford, first officer of the OPAS, Behemoth, and for all Beltalota between Ceres and Infinity, first officer in our hearts. When Ashford first comes aboard the Behemoth, he enters with Alpha Energy, menacing, as if he's come into the picture as a foil to Kamina's natural decency. Commander Klaus Ashford requesting permission to come aboard. And yet we are instantly thrown for a loop when, following his subtly aggressive introduction, he puts Diogo in his place for acting disrespectfully towards Kamina. And that is your commanding officer. Your lieutenant in the OPA Navy now start acting like one. And credit to Ashford for keeping his cool in the face of the toxic femininity that is omnipresent in Belter culture. Matching outfits, really. Ah, it's a As Ashford continues to introduce himself to us, we come to find out that he was a pirate, and he's clearly made quite a few friends during his years plundering the high skies. Hey, Gregory. <laughs> So if he's a former pirate, then what's he doing aboard this ship, the hope of all belters? Why would Fred Johnson want him there? Well, first we have to remember that belters don't look at pirates the same way as people from Mars and Earth do. To the belt, pirates are sometimes heroes who take from the haves and give to the belt. It's clear that more principled belters like Kamina Drummer don't look fondly upon pirates like Ashford. But still, in lieu of an organized military, belters might look upon pirates as Earthers would war veterans. The belt doesn't have an endless pool of venerated soldiers to turn to for leadership. And so pirates like Ashford who have lots of experience in combat are highly valued. Secondly, although Ashford is a former pirate, we get some hints very early on that he's undergoing a shift in perspective. What a surprise. A pirate who supports an act of piracy. Oh, I'm a patriot now. Ashford clearly suggests that he's now focusing his energy in a more positive patriotic way. And he even states his intentions to Kamina very early on. Kamina, you have nothing to worry about from me. I am here to be your first officer, and I have no problem with that. From the minute he steps onto the ship, it appears that Ashford has the intention of usurping power from Kamina. However, here he addresses his ambition openly and attempts to break some of the tension. And yet still, it takes a while longer to really discern his motives, as many of his actions can be interpreted in multiple ways. When Kamina is about to space a crew member for drug dealing, Ashford interrupts and undercuts her command. Captain! I have a word. In a minute. Now. This seems subversive, and yet he has a reasonable explanation for his interruption. If we ever want to be accepted as equals with the great nations of Earth and Mars, we must act with greatness. Kamina seems to believe that Ashford is only doing this as a clever way to project to the crew that he is the superior leader and that he should be in charge, all without ever having to openly foment mutiny. I agree with the captain. I admire your loyalty, but I don't believe you. Is he trying to manipulate Naomi to his side here, or does he truly just want her help in convincing Kamina to do what's right for the belt? It's not easy to interpret Ashford's actions, but the more we see of him, the more we see the consistency in his philosophy and understand what makes him tick. Ashford's seizing Kamina a little of himself. She's cynical, he's cynical. I was specifically promised by Anderson Dawes that I could be the cynic on this ship. Ashford has experienced every form of brutality known to man. 
he spent a good portion of his life as a cynic, and he sees that being cynical has not gotten the belt anywhere. Ah, they'll be naming babies and ships after him for 50 years. If the galaxy is still here in 50 years. Ah, your optimism makes me feel young again. <laughs> Ashford sees Kamina's pessimism as a mistake. Like a wise old grandpa, he hates seeing youth look upon reality through such a dark lens. Ashford does appreciate Kamina's belter pride, as he has a lot of it himself. He celebrates Maneo, the young slingshotter who rams his ship into the ring space and explodes because this is what belters do. To our foolish and fearless young rockhopper who sunk his teeth deep into the unknown. Where Earthers and Martians hesitate to act until the safest moment, belters knock down doors and seize the day and die in doing so if they must. They're all about FOMO. Ashford wants to encourage belter pride while shedding the belter cynicism that somehow so often goes hand in hand with belter courage and results in belters engaging in destructive behavior and tactics. Both Ashford's cynicism and his belter pride inform his decision making on the behemoth. He's a man of aggressive action. When the UN ship the Sung Un is blown up and James Holden appears to take credit for the attack in what turns out to be a deep fake message, Ashford wants to immediately attack the Rosinante. Hail the Rossi, get Holden on comms and tell him he has 10 seconds to retract. We have to fire on the Rosinante, we have to do it now. Kameen, on the other hand, wants to be cautious, but Ashford, the old cynic he is, doesn't believe this ends well for the belt unless they attack. And additionally, unlike Naomi, he doesn't care about James Holden and his crew. He only cares about the belt. Belters do not put their individual lives above the collective. This is why later on, Ashford proposes using the behemoth's comm laser to destroy the ring gate. The behemoth's comm laser is the most powerful ever built, and I propose we make it even more so, and use it to slice through the ring and destroy it. It might seem cruel that he tried to force his crew to sacrifice their lives without even giving them a choice, but this is how belters think. As a belter, you know that if your death is required to advance the belt's interest, then that's the way it goes. That station killed a lot of us, and they are trying to kill more. It's time we fight back. I get more people. Ashford seems to be a cold-hearted person at first, with no reservations about killing others to advance the belt's objectives, such as the crew of the Rosinante. He doesn't apologize to Naomi for almost killing her friends while Kamina does. He doesn't feel guilt about that. And yet he does go and find Naomi later. I left the OPA long before I left the Rossi. And now you're back here with us and we need you here. He senses that he's losing Naomi and he sees her as a useful resource and he wants to try to manipulate her into sticking around because she's vital to their mission. Ashford is always about serving the belt's interests. But almost nothing that he does is about power. I mean, Ashford definitely thinks he should be in charge, but only because he thinks he'll do a better job of achieving the belt's goals than Kamina will. But he's not selfish. That's your sharpness. That's your power. We are belters. Here we see him help Kamina rile up the crew. He wants what she wants. He just doesn't totally trust that Kamina can be the better leader. It's a warship. The belt's first and only. And I'm its captain. Yeah. Yeah, you are. But he's not going to put personal ambition above his duty because the belt is what's most important to him. But I'm dancing around the point here. Let's get to the heart of the man. The Ashford we meet is truly a man transitioning between philosophies, as simultaneously the belt itself transitions from insurgent faction into a legitimate power. His cynicism is dying, and his antiquated belter ways are just barely holding on. You have to trust your gut. Well, the last time I did that, it didn't work out so well, did it? We were all flying blind, pump up. Yeah, well, me more than you. When he turns out to be wrong about Holden and the ring gate, even more of his stubborn old ways slip away as he recognizes that his tendency towards rash aggressive action almost led to disaster there. Let's take a step back for a second though. Just after the belt enters the ring space, Diogo approaches Ashford and bemoans that Kamina is captain of the behemoth over Ashford. Captain should be you. And Ashford responds not just by brushing aside the idea that he should be in command, but by harshly chastising Diogo for even raising the point. I've seen friends breathe the vacuum and watched my only child burn. So when I tell you to tread carefully, you would do well to stop and talk. This right here is a line that we must look to to understand Ashford. 
Camino will never have the reputation that Ashford does with the more unscrupulous belters like Diogo, because she follows rules. She's compassionate, understanding, even if she hides it. But Ashford spent most of his life among the Diogos of the belt, raiding and pillaging. So for belters like Diogo, Ashford plays a very important role. He can influence such belters for the better. As he says, I watched my only child burn. He, like many in the Expanse, is suffering from the loss of a loved one. Anybody who has had a child understands that it is their duty to leave the world better than they found it. The tragedy of losing a child has caused Ashford to undergo a philosophical renaissance as an old man. He spent his whole life as a pirate, committing violent acts in the name of the belt, on behalf of the belt, and all doing so has ever brought him his more violence and brutality. The death of his child has awakened him to the futility of chaos and violence. Now his only purpose is to leave the belt a better place than he found it. This is why I call him a grandpa. This is how you should see his relationship with Kamina. Yes, they're peers, and yes, she has many talents that he does not. But don't look at their relationship as if they are rivals. Ashford is more experienced than her. He's older. He's seen what cynicism brings. He believes the only way for the belt to establish itself as a legitimate state is to act like one. I have no desire to look like anyone other than myself. But I will sacrifice my pride to make something better for the future. These are the words of a man who has been enlightened through pain. He has failed throughout his life to help the belt gain even an inch of respect despite all of the deaths he's caused and experienced. He realizes the only way forward is to just give up his hate, give up the violence, and be gracious. This ship, my ship, can create spin gravity, so I am able to offer it to all of you. Following the second ring space slowdown, which causes mass casualties and knocks out power for all ships save for the behemoth thanks to its rotating drum, Ashford welcomes all aboard the ship, no matter their allegiance. This is what a state that wants to be taken seriously does. Now this isn't to say that Ashford denies Belter grievances to be legitimate. There's no gain in this. No. It sends a message. But peace cannot change a century of anger overnight. After the UN and Mars accept the belt as an official member of the Ringgate blockade, Ashford signals here that he doesn't want the establishment powers to think that all is just forgiven. But overall, he's willing to have general peace in exchange for recognition. Still, there's no one who understands Belter grievances better than Ashford, which is why no one knows Marco and Naros better than Ashford either. Marco is the type of person whom Ashford would have been around often in his younger years. Ah, he's charismatic, he's, he's uncompromising, he's very dangerous. Men like that cast a spell. And because of Ashford's evolution, he does not see Marco as a positive force for the belt, but rather a disease, one that is responsible for holding the belt back and for perpetuating violence and bloodshed in the soul system. Marco, our ways don't work anymore. The ring has changed everything. Ashford realizes that he helped cultivate the environment in which belters like Marco can thrive, and he sees that Marco's ways are incompatible with a prosperous belter future. This is why Ashford votes to execute Marco. Well, I speak for Anderson Dawes and City Station, and I say death. It's funny that Ashford would think that a violent act could prevent more violence, because that's exactly the mentality Ashford advises against. But he also knows that someone like Marco cannot go free because his ways are poisonous to peace. I did what had to be done. Yes, but his words will sway more. He has that, uh, that gift. <laughs> Ashford recognizes what is at stake with Marco. If he goes free, all of the efforts of Fred Johnson and Kamina and other belters to transform the image of the belt, to raise it up, will be for naught. Ashford once thought like Marco, and all he ever got for it is suffering. I have seen blood spilt my entire life, and I have spilt enough myself to know that the future, our future, cannot be built on violence. Because Ashford knows Marco, because part of him lives in Marco, he must stamp out Marco himself. He must remove that way of thinking, his way of thinking from the collective belter consciousness if the belt is to rise. Do you know what kind of man Marco is? I'm pretty sure I have a good idea. He's angry, like many belters his age bitter about our lot in life. It's rather moving that Ashford, the cold-hearted, cynical pirate, is the one in the end who is trying to convince people that peace is the answer, that the future can be good. 
This is one of the most important lessons in The Expanse. Where so many people only become more and more bitter as life goes on, here is this man who has for so long been angry and bitter, who in losing his child should now be infinitely more spiteful towards the world. This is a time for Inners and Belters to join hands and together build. But instead, Ashford finds goodness. He embraces humility and reason. He sheds his anger and promotes peace and forgiveness. Bitterness gets us nowhere. Everyone becomes bitter. You're not special because you do too. You're special if you refuse to become bitter in the face of everyone else turning to the dark side. Why just him? Why not all his friends and family? Yeah, why not? He is not only himself. He is everyone who cares for him. This, more than anything, shows how Ashford has changed in his old age. When the crew of the Tynan wants to kill the captured Martian prisoner, Ashford encourages empathy. If the measure of a person is where he starts versus where he ends up, then Ashford went out of this world as a damn decent man. We should all hope to make such progress in life. Ashford indeed leaves the soul system better off than it was when he came into it. He saw the belt gain a seat at the table with Earth and Mars in no small part because of his own actions in the ring space and after. But ultimately he was felled by the same evil that he once perpetuated. Still, cheers to the great Ashford, left hand of Anderson Dawes, who as he fell into vacuum to his death, showed no fear in the face of doom. Like a true proud belter, he held his head high and sang an old belter shanty into the night. I was sick and I to death, but I vowed with my every breath. His lullaby now echoes among the darkness, forever permeating the dreams of hopeful belters. And to him, we belt a lotus sing back. Good night to the stars embrace. Good night to this belter disgrace. Good night to our rock hopper story. Good night to poor old Grigori. Good night to this newly hopeful place. Good night to Kamina's glory. Good night to Slingshotter ships apace. Good night to Fred Johnson's face. Good night to Ashford, O oh holy grace. Good night, good belter, dancing through space. Anyway, that's the video. I love Ashford. Let me know in the comments down below if you do too. Um, give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Remember to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. For now, my name is American Ben, and I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.